able to open up your word to us. We might be able to see and understand the things that you have written in this most holy word. We ask you to give us eyes to see and understanding to perceive what your wisdom has to say unto us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, last week, we were in uh, the uh, 30th through 33rd chapters of Genesis, where Jacob had uh, found the love of his life, Rachel, and he married, he worked for her, and then was deceived and received her elder sister rather than her, and had to work seven additional years. Uh, this was basically payback for him uh, deceiving his brother, who was the older brother, and uh, taking his birthright and then stealing his blessing. Again, you reap what you sow. Uh, Jacob married both Leah and Rachel, and Leah and Rachel's father's name was Laban, whose name means white. And when he married those two, uh, this uh, son, whose name was Laban, gave uh, both of his daughters a, uh, a, a slave. And according to the Genesis narrative, the people who were to be slaves were to be Canaanites. So they received the Canaanite slaves, so they were black women. Again, uh, Genesis chapter nine, uh, verse 18 says that Ham was the father of the Canaanites, being the father of Cana. And so he received basically four women uh, to be their, their leader. And they, gave, they were in competition, Lee and Rachel were in competition with each other to give to see if can give him the most children, they gave them, they gave each of, uh, each of them gave Jacob their slave uh, to bed. And that's what happened. So they became sex slaves. I think one's name was Bilhah, the other's name was Zilpah, and they produced children for him. Now, unlike American slavery, where uh, the laws were written that the children received the um, condition of the mother, which was a slave and bound, uh, even irregardless of uh, them being the master seed, the, uh, the, the, the wives of uh, uh, Jacob did not choose to have their children enslaved. So they were uh, given freedom. So although Leah's children were born of her slave, they were still free, though the mother was not. Uh, and same with Rachel. Uh, her slave Bilhah uh, gave her Dan and Neptali, whose name means uh, judge and wrestling, uh, as Jacob's sex slave, but they were still born free born and considered uh, equal Hebrews. So one fourth of all the Hebrews born in that relationship uh, for one third of them uh, were uh, basically half black being uh, of the Canaanite tribe. <clears throat> now, what is interesting is that we left off last week in the 33rd chapter around verse 18. And it says, and Jacob came to Shalem, uh, the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Cana, who was the father of Cana, Ham's the father of Cana. So he's in a black city. And when he came, uh, when he came from Pandanaram, he pitched his tent before the city and he bought a parcel of the field where he spread his tent at the hand of the children of Hamor, Shechem's father for a hundred pieces of money. And he erected an altar there and called it Elohi Israel. And now we're going to go into the 34th chapter of Genesis. And this is where it gets very interesting, <clears throat> color-wise. Jacob only had one daughter. It was born to him of, uh, Leah's, of Leah, and her, his daughter's name was Dinah. In the 34th chapter of Genesis, it says, And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, uh, which she bare unto Jacob, went up to see the daughters of the land. What land? the land of Cana. So she was uh, uh, in her teens or 20s and went around trying to find uh, these black daughters of the land of Cana. And Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Havite, the Havites were descendants of Ham. <clears throat> uh, he was a prince of the country. And he saw her and he took her 
and he lay with her and defiled her. In other words, he raped her. So Dinah, Jacob's daughter, is raped by this Canaanite uh, whose name was uh, Hamar. He was a Hevite Canaanite. Uh, his name is Shechem. Now, Hamar is who uh, Jacob bought the land in the land of Canaan from. And this guy's son, who was a prince, which means that Hamar was a king, saw uh, Jacob's Hebrew daughter, took her, lay with her, and defiled her. But a strange thing happened. The Bible says, and his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel and spake kindly unto the damsel. So he fell in love with her. And Shechem, Shechem, Shechem spake unto his father Hamar, saying, Give me this damsel to wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter, and now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Jacob held his peace until they were come. Now Hamar, the father of Shechem, went out unto Jacob to commune with him. And the sons of Jacob came out from the field, and when they heard it, and the men were grieved, and they were very angry or wroth, because he, Shechem, had wrought folly in Israel in lying with Jacob's daughter, their sisters, which thing ought not to have been done. And Hamar communed with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. I pray you give her him to wife, and make ye marriages with us Canaanites, and give your daughters unto us, and take our daughters unto you. And ye shall dwell with us in the land that is before you, dwell and trade and therein, and get you possessions therein. And Shechem said unto her father, and unto her brethren, let me find grace in your eyes, and what ye shall say unto me I will give. Ask me never so much a dowry and gift, and I will give according to as you shall say unto me, but give me the damsel to wife. And the sons of Jacob answered Shechem, the rapist, and Hamar, his father, deceitfully, and said, because he has defiled Dinah, their sister, they said unto him, we cannot do this thing to give our sister to one that is uncircumcised, for that is a reproach unto us. Remember, anyone that was circumcised became a Hebrew. He said, but in this we will consent unto you, if you be as we, that every male of you be circumcised. Then we will give our daughters unto you, and we will take your daughters unto us, and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. Notice what they're saying. When they get into the covenant of circumcision, they become what? One people. Well, God's listening to this as well. But if you will not hearken unto us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and we will be gone. And their words pleased Hamar, he was a king of the Canaanites over that land, and Shechem, Hamar's son, the rapist. And the young man deferred not to do the thing because he had the light in Jacob's daughter, and he was more honorable than all of the house of his father. And it's a shame that in this black Canaanite's household, this rapist was more honorable than all the men of his father's house. That's what it's saying. So he deferred not to do the thing. In other words, he cut the covenant right there. He circumcised himself right in front of everybody. And Hamar and Shechem and his son came into the gate of the city and communed with the men of their city and told them, saying, These men are peaceable with us. Therefore, let them dwell in the land and trade therein uh, for the land. Behold, it is large enough for them. Uh, let us take their daughters to us for wives and let us give them our daughters. Only herein will the men consent unto us to dwell with us to be one people. If every male among us be circumcised, and they, as they are circumcised, uh, shall not their cattle and their substance and every beast of theirs be ours? Only let us consent unto them, and they will dwell with us. And Hamor and, his, and unto his son uh, hearkened all that went out of the gate of the city. And every male was circumcised and went out of the gate of the city. So you had this black city, the city of black men, who were all, who all decided to go ahead and be circumcised. 
so they could be in covenant as one people with these Hebrews. And it came to pass on the third day when they were sore that the two sons of Jacob, uh, Simeon, whose name is, means hearing, and Levi, whose name means join, died as brethren, each took his sword and came upon the city boldly and slew all the males. And they slew Hamar, the king, and Shechem, his son, the rapist, with the edge of the sword, and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and went out. This guy, after he raped her, he didn't even give her back. He just kept her in the house. So no telling what they did to his body. But they killed his father and him with the edge of the sword. And the sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister. And they took their sheep, their oxen, their asses, and all that was in the city and that which was in the field, and all of their wealth, and all of their little ones. And they took their wives captive and spoiled even all that were in the house. And Jacob said to uh, Simeon and Levi, ye have troubled me to make me to stink among the inhabitants of the land among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And I, being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me, and I will be destroyed, I and my house. And they said, should he deal with our sister as with the harlot? So they took vengeance upon this city of black men because of what one black male did to their sister. They wiped out the entire city. And what did they do with the black women of that city? And their black children, they took them captives. And the Bible states later on that Simeon had children by that Canaanitish woman of this uh, land of Hamar. So they were mingling with them, themselves with the Canaanites. They killed all the men of the city and took their wives captives, and they became uh, the sex slaves of these Hebrews, which did what to the skin of the Hebrews, because the male Hebrew is the one whom the uh, Hebrew lineage passed through, it made the Hebrews darker, a dark-skinned race. Chapter 35, and God said unto Jacob, arise and go up to Bethel, which means the house of God, and dwell there and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau, thy brother. So when Jacob gets in trouble, God tells him to do what? You go to the house of God, you get before God's altar, just like you did when you had to face Esau for what you did evil unto him. And now you're going there because of what your sons did evil unto these people who trusted them. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all them that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments and let us arise and go up to the house of God, Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way that I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods that were in their hand, and all their earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. In scripture, anytime he sees oak, oak means instruction. The Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and reproof and what? Instruction in righteousness. What was their instructions? To put away the strange gods and their earrings, which are in their ears. If you notice, every time it talks about earrings, it always is dealing with gods. Remember when the children of Israel were delivered by Moses out of uh, African slavery? And when Moses went up into the mount, and he hadn't came back, the, the Israelites rebelled against God and said, told Aaron to make us a God. And what did they do to make that God? They broke off those golden earrings, which basically gold is symbolic of divine. The hear, earrings is symbolic of hearing. They broke off their divine hearing and stopped hearing the word of God and made themselves a molten cattle. Here, they're stopping listening to their strange gods. They're taking those earrings off of them, and they're putting it under this oak. 
according to the instructions that Jacob gave them. And they journeyed and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, which was in the land of Cana, that is Bethel, he and all the people that were with him. And he built there an altar and called that place El Bethel, I mean house of God, because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. But Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died and was buried uh, beneath Bethel under the oak. And it was called Alon Bach Uf. And God appeared unto Jacob again when he was in Pan came out of Pandanaram and blessed him. And God said unto him, thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall thy name be called. And he called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. And kings, plural, shall come out of thy loins. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee, I will give it. And to thy seed after thee will I give the land. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in that place where he talked with him, even the pillar of stone. And he poured a drink offering thereupon. And he poured uh, oil thereupon. And Jacob called the name of that place that God spake unto him, Bethel, which means the house of God. And they journeyed from Bethel. And there was but a little way to come to Ephrah, which is Bethlehem. And Rachel travailed. And she had hard labor. And it came to pass when, when she was in hard labor that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, for thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass as her soul was in departing. The Bible says the body without the spirit or soul is dead, for she was dying, that she called his name Ben-Noi, ben 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 which means uh, the son of my sorrow. And his father called him Benjamin, which means the son of my right hand. So anytime that, you know, you have a situation and you start calling it what you see, that's not the way to do it. By faith, you change that situation. You baptize it in what you want it to be. And this is what exactly what Jacob did in walking by faith. He called him the son of my right hand. And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. And Jacob set up a pillar on her grave, and that pillar of Rachel's grave is there unto this day. And Israel journeyed and spread his tent beyond the tower of Edar. And it came to pass, when Israel dwelt in the land, that Reuben, his firstborn son, went in and laid with Bilhah, that's Rachel's slave, his father's concubine, and Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. The sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, uh, and then Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Notice those names. So when Reuben went and slayed with his father's concubine, that canceled his blessing out from being the one who should have received the double blessing from Jacob, okay, whose name was changed to Israel because he slept with his father's wife. So then we come down to the second born, whose name was Simeon, and third born's name was Levi. What did we get through reading that those two guys did? They went and deceived the people who were to be in covenant as Israelites with them and killed all the black men of the land of Cana uh, in that territory. So they also were excluded from the blessing. So then who's the fourth born son? Judah. And that's who Jesus Christ came through as the lion of the tribe of who? Judah. Then came Issachar, then came Zebulun. Now the sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. The sons of Bilhah, the sex slave, now Rachel's handmaids, were Dan and Naphtali. The sons of Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, were Gad and Asher. So we have four of the 12, one third of the 12 tribes of Israel began as half black because those um, those the slaves were Canaanites according to the narrative of the of Genesis 9. Those are to be the slaves of all the people. And Jacob came unto Isaac his father unto Mamre. 
unto the city of Arba, which is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac sojourned. So what is the city they're coming to? Hebron. And this is where Abram came from, Earl of the Chaldees. God told him to get you up, get you out of that land, and to a place that I will show you. He came down to the land of Cana, and he went to, he crossed the river and into Hebron, and he was called Abraham the what? Hebrew. Now, what do you think they spoke in Hebron? They spoke Hebrew in Hebron. Uh, Hebrew is a black language. Now, when you go to school or you go to your commentaries, they will tell you it's a white language. But you see the scriptures telling you that this is in the land of Cana. And you'll find out that the majority of these languages that they call Semitic are really Hamitic. So they, uh, he gets the title of uh, Abram the Hebrew. He's the first Hebrew in the Bible. Do not go by what white people look at when they go to the table of nations in Genesis chapter 10, they say Eber was the father of the Hebrews. No, he wasn't. Eber did not even go to the land of Hebron to be called a Hebrew. He was a uh, ancestor of Abraham, but he did not give birth. His children's names were, uh, during the days the earth was divided, Peleg and Jokthan. Those two were not Hebrews, okay? So they're lying. And when the Bible says the earth, the dry land was called, earth was divided, it didn't mean the planet cracked in half. There was one landmass. And when it divided into seven continents, what the Bible states that the earth divided itself. That's how we were having, able to have a worldwide flood because there were just one landmass. But you let white seminaries tell you, oh, it's always been seven continents because they do not believe scripture. The Bible says when God called the dry land forth, the dry land he called forth because he had submerged it in Jeremiah chapter four, when he destroyed the people off the earth, he told them to, he, he put Adam and Eve on there and told them to replenish the earth and be fruitful and multiply and replenish, which means repopulate the earth. The same command he gave to Noah and Shem, Ham and Japheth after he had again depopulated the earth with the flood. Nevertheless, uh, Abram came down from Ur of the Chaldees where he spoke Aramaic in when he came down into Hebron, he had to learn the language of Hebrew to communicate with these, uh, these Havites that were in the land of uh, he, uh, they they were in the land of Hebron, and they called him Abraham the Hebrew and said that he was a prince among them. So that's your lesson today. And the days of Isaac were 180 years, four score years. And Isaac gave up the ghost, he died, and he was gathered unto his people, being old and full of days, and his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. You'll notice that when you die in the Old Testament, you give up the ghost and you die. And you're buried. But before it says that you were buried, what did the Bible say? He was gathered unto his people. Same with you when you die. When you die, you will be gathered unto your people. That's why the guy that was uh, in hell said, uh, have somebody go back and testify to my brothers that they don't come here. When he was in Abraham's bosom, and Abraham said, there's a chasm between you, rich man, and me and Lazarus, that poor beggar. And I cannot come over to you, and you cannot come over to me. And he said, well, send somebody back. He said, they won't even, said, they have Moses, and they have the prophets. Now, what did Abraham know about Moses? Abraham was 430 years before the law, the law of Moses was given in many more years before the prophets came. But he knew in the netherworld, when paradise was in the heart of the earth, that they had Moses and the prophets. If they won't hear those two, neither will they hear anyone who raised from the dead. And when Jesus Christ raised from the dead, the Bible says that some believed and some believed not. So, uh, but those people, that guy knew that had his father and brothers died, 
the, he, they were gonna be gathered to their people where in hellfire where he was tormented in that flame. So that's why we are to testify to everyone about Jesus Christ. What are we to testify? How good we've become since we've received Jesus? No, because we still aren't that good. We don't preach ourselves, the Bible says. We preach Christ and him crucified. What do we tell people to get them saved? We tell them, I'm a sinner like you. I make mistakes like you. The only difference between a person going to heaven and a person going to hell is that the person going to heaven has their sins forgiven while the person going to hell dies in their sins because the only unforgivable sin is to die with your sins unforgiven. But what must you do to be saved? You must repent of the sin that's sending you to hell. The sin that's sending you to hell is not cheating on your wife, cheating on your taxes, your sex life. The sin that's sending you to hell is not you drinking, smoking, drugging. Those do not send you to hell. What sin sends a person to hell? The sin of unbelief. The sin of unbelief sends every soul to hell. That sin must be repented of. How do you repent of unbelief? By turning your unbelief in Jesus to belief in Jesus. Romans 10, 9 and 10 states that you must confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Once you confess that with your mouth, you have to have works. And your works don't work. My works don't work. A lot of people are going to be going to hell thinking that they were Christians because they lived the Christian life. But they're going to hell boasting about the Christian life that they lived. Jesus says, you will know them by their fruits. Many will say unto me that day, Lord, Lord, have I not preached in your name? But they're going to hell. Have I not cast out devils in your name? That's their fruit. And they're going to hell. And have I, did, have I not done many marvelous works in your name, the name of Jesus? And he will declare unto them, depart from me. I never knew you. Not that I knew you on your backslid. I never knew you. So whose ministers were they? They're bragging about their ministerial works, casting out devils, doing many marvelous works, and preaching in his name. Why are these ministers, these Christian ministers who preach in Jesus' name, going to hell? Because that was their plan of salvation. Me casting out devils is going to get me into heaven. No. Me preaching the gospel is going to get me into heaven. No. Me doing good, marvelous works are going to get me into heaven. Wonderful works? No. But that's the fruit that false preachers have taught the church of Jesus Christ. And they're going to hell. And the ones, the blind are leading the blind. And they're all going to fall in the pit. What pit is that? The pit of hell. What didn't they say? Lord, Lord, have I not believed that Jesus Christ died for my sins? Lord, Lord, did I not confess that Jesus is Lord? Lord, Lord, did I not believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead? Did that, come, did that fruit of their lips come out of their mouth? No. The plan of salvation came out of their mouth, and that plan is me casting out devils is going to get me into heaven, me doing many marvelous works is going to get me into heaven, and me preaching the gospel is going to get me into heaven, and that's what sends you to hell. That's why Jesus Christ said, the whores and prostitutes will enter into the kingdom because of you. Why? Because some whores and prostitutes believe that Christ died for their sins and rose again. Did it make them a godly person with upright character? No. But it gave them the free gift of eternal life. And they don't even know it. So that's the difference. The only unforgivable sin is to die with your sins unforgiven. And then we go to Genesis chapter 36. These are the generations of Esau, who is Edom, whose name means red. He was born red and hairy. Therefore, he was a man of color. He was not born white and hairy. He was born red and hairy. Now you have a cult that is taking the black community by storm and they call themselves Hebrew Israelites. And they will tell you, if you're a black male, if you have a facial hair like I do, you're not saved. You're not godly because the law of Moses says that you should have, you're not to shave your face and if you do not know scripture that they are going by the law of a carnal commandment carnal means flesh and we don't go by the law of a carnal commandment we're under the law of the spirit the spirit and life has set us free from the law of these carnal commandments of sin and death then you will be deceived as many people have been they will also teach you that you know we obey the law 
The Bible says, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And then they will deceive you by saying, and Jesus's commandments are the laws of Moses. Why, are, why aren't you here on the Sabbath day? The white man put the Sabbath day on Sunday because they worship the sun. Why do you worship God on the sun, on Sunday? They are foolish and they don't even know they are. And we have a lot of people, the Bible says, by good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. Jesus warned you of them when he said, many in the last days, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. Now, we've always heard it saying, I am Christ. Jesus means it both ways. Some will say that they themselves are Christ, like Jim Jones did. Others will say that Jesus is the Christ. And then he says, but they will deceive many. How? They will tell them, and the way you make Jesus Lord of your life is by obeying the laws of Moses, which is exactly how you go to hell. Because the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 4, whosoever is justified by the law hath fallen from grace, and Christ shall profit them nothing. What is nothing? That means no salvation for you. There's no salvation of, I'm going to believe God's grace and a little bit of works. The Bible says in Romans chapter 11, and in Romans chapter 10 as well, if, if it be of grace, then it's no more of works. But if it be of works, of the law of Moses, then it's no more of grace. And we are saved by grace through faith, that not of ourselves, it is a gift from God, not of our works, that's any man boasts. The Bible says that, our works don't work. When they ask Jesus, what must we do that we must work the works of God? Turn, for, turn to it to yourself. In John chapter 6, verse 39, Jesus said, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom God hath sent. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him, that's the work of God, should not perish, but have everlasting life from which things you could not be justified by the laws of Moses. For by the works of the law shall no flesh living be justified. It is evident that the just shall live by what? Faith. And it says in Galatians 2.12, the law is not of faith. And whatsoever is not of faith is what? Sin. So when you try to stand before God, I kept your commandments. I cast out devils. I did many marvelous works. I, 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 and you're not pointing to the cross of Jesus Christ. Didn't Christ's blood wash away my sins? Didn't my faith justify me? Didn't his blood justify me? Didn't his resurrection justify me? Didn't the plan of salvation that God wrought before the work, the works were finished before the foundation of the earth? Didn't that justify me from my sins and make me as righteous as Jesus Christ? Didn't that impart to me the holiness of the Holy Spirit? Didn't that make me perfect forever, as it is written? By one sacrifice, he is perfected forever. Those who come to God by him, they're not trusting in any of those things. They're trusting to themselves that they are righteous. And these Hebrew Israelites will tell you that, they'll point to you the scripture and says that Jacob I have loved, Israelites I have loved, but Esau... And they say that Esau is the red man. Now, what does Esau mean? Red. But they say that Esau is the white man. Not the red man, but a white man. So let's go ahead and look at the scriptures, make liars out of them. Verse 2 in chapter 36 of Genesis says, Esau took wives of the daughters of who? Who? Cana. Ham is the father of Cana. Look it up for yourself. Genesis 9, 18. So he took black women. This Red man has children by black women. Ada, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, who was a son of Cana through Heth. And Aholabama, the daughter of Ana, the daughter of Zeboin of the Havites. It says that Ham, your son of Cana, was the father of Havites in Genesis chapter 10's Table of Nations. So he took two black women and began to have children by them. Is that going to have... Uh, uh, is that going to yield a black, a white child? No, no. They're lying. They're lying. And if you are foolish enough not to go back and research, anytime anyone stands up in front of you and tells you, thus saith the Lord, the Bible says it is your responsibility not to believe that person until you go back like the uh, Bereans did 
who were more noble than those of Greece, Thessalonica, because they went back to see if the things that Paul said were so. They went back and searched the scriptures daily to see if those things were so. It says that Esau, his foundation, marrying black women, daughters of Cana, and Ham was the father of Cana, and the Hittite, Canaanite, and he had children by them. And then he also took a wife, her name was uh, Bathshemath, Ishmael's daughter. Now, Ishmael was the half black son of Abraham. Remember? Abraham used Ishmael's mother, Hagar, the Egyptian, from the land of Ham, when his name was Abram, as his sex slave. And after Ishmael's birth, God came on the scene and told Abram, Your name no longer shall be Abram, but Abraham. Ham, for a father of a multitude of nationalities, shall you be. Ishmael had 12 children by black women. So Ishmael and Ishmael's mother, Hagar, took Ishmael after Abraham banished him, his half-black son, and his black mother out to the uh, desert, giving them only a canteen of water and a crust of bread. And Ishmael's mother took him back to Egypt where she appointed him a wife from the land of Ham, a black woman. So this uh, wife that uh, Esau marries, that is the daughter of Ishmael, she has two thirds black blood in her, okay? Now she's also a descendant of Abraham and that was one third of Hebrew blood that he gave her. But he had two thirds being one from his mother and one from his wife that he bared uh, this uh, woman for uh, Esau's uh, wife. Nevertheless, Esau took wives and his sons and his daughters and all the persons of his house and all his cattle and his beasts and all of his substance, which he had gotten in the land of where? Cana, among black people. And he went into the country from the face of his brother Jacob. For their riches was more than they might dwell together. And the land wherein they were strangers could not bear them because of their cattle. Thus Esau dwelt in Mount Seir, uh, Esau is Edom, which means red. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. Now again, the Caucasians came from Japheth. They were no Caucasians that had speaking parts in the Old Testament. Esau was not a white man. The Bible says that he was a Shemite and he was uh, red and hairy all over, okay? And these are the names of Esau's sons. Eliphaz, the son of uh, uh, Ada, his wife of Esau. And Ruel, the son of Bashemath, the wife of Esau. And the sons of Elamath were Timon, and Omar, and Zepho, and Gatam, and Kanaz, and Tima, and on and on and on. Then it starts going into, notice in verse 15, it calls them Duke Timon, Duke Omar, Duke Zepho, and Duke Kanaz, because this was written by people who were British and they see people as dukes, okay? So they use their own, they put their own words inside there. There were no dukes in the scripture. This is a uh, how whites describe these children of Esau. And look at all of them. You go all the way down and then to the last um, verse of 43, it says Duke Magdal, uh, Duke Iram, these are the dukes of Edom according to their habitations in the lands of their possessions. He is Esau, the father of the who? Edomites. And they were what type of tribe? They were a red and black tribe. So they were a tribe of color. They were not white people. So when the Hebrew Israelites come and try to tell you that these were where white people are, they're trying to say that Jacob I have loved and God hates white people. That's what they're saying when they say Esau and hate it. No, Esau was the Middle Easterners that are over there who, um, who dwelled in the land of Cana, and they were always fighting against the uh, children of the Israelites. Okay, chapter 37. And Jacob dwelled in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Cana among black people, where Abraham, his grandfather, sojourned. And these were the generation of Jacob. Jacob Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives or concubines, and Joseph brought uh, unto his father their evil report. 
Now, Israel loved Jacob, loved Joseph more than all of his other children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brothers saw that their fathers loved him more than all of them, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. This is what you have when you have uh, giving us the lesson of when you start making partiality in your family, you start bringing uh, hell into your own household. Okay. And uh, Jacob dreamed a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him yet the more. He said unto them, here I pray you this dream that I have dreamed. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field and no white sheep arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made worship or obeisance to my sheaf. And his brother said unto him, shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou, little brother, indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. He's symbolic of Jesus Christ. They hated him for the words that he spake. And he dreamed yet another dream. And he told it to his brothers and said, behold, I have a dream, a dream more and more. Behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obeisance unto me. Now, he was one of the 12. He said, 11, but you're you guys the stars. And he told it to his father and his brother. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Remember, his mother was dead. And... <clears throat> His brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. And his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said unto him, Here am I. This is the mark of Jesus Christ <laughs> coming down to the nation of Israel, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And uh, he says, Here am I, send me. And he said unto him, go, I pray thee, and see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks and bring me word again. And he sent him out to the vale of Hebron and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked saying, what seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, they are departed thence. For I heard them say, let us go down to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brother, and he found him in Dothan. And they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them and conspired to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, the dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say that some evil beast has devoured him. And we will see what becomes of his dreams. And Reuben, the firstborn son of Israel, Jacob, heard it. And he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass that Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat and his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread. They lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites, remember, this is the half-black tribe of Abraham, that came from Gilead and their camels bearing spicery, balm, and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. These were the things that gold, frankincense, and sense of myrrh speaks of death. <clears throat> the Bible says Jesus Christ spiritually died in Egypt. And Jacob said, uh, I'm sorry, Judah said unto his brother, what profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him for he is our brother and our flesh and his brothers were content. And when they passed by Midianites, merchantmen, they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver and they brought Joseph into Egypt. Now, the Midianites, who were the Midianites? These were also children of Abraham. But Abraham had married a black woman of the land of Cana, where they dwelled. And they had a son by the name of Midian. And Midian was raised up, and he 
got married in the land of Canaan to which women? He didn't self-divide to become Midianites. He married black women and his children married black women of the land of Canaan. So they were black tribesmen also, okay? So you got the Ishmaelites being black. You got the Midianites being black in this land of Canaan. And Reuben returned into the pit. And behold, Joseph was not in the pit. And he tore his clothes and he returned to his brother and said, the child is not, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, this have we found now, uh, whether it be thy son's coat or not, tell us. And he knew it. And he said, it is my son's coat. An evil beast has devoured him. And Joseph was without and ran in pieces. This goes back to how did um, Jacob deceive his father? When he came to his father, Isaac, who was near blind, he came in the skin of what? Goats. The goat skin was on his head and on his arms. So he was acting like he was what? Esau. And his sons are deceiving him the way he deceived his father. Okay? Because you read what you sow. God's a very good accountant. And jo Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son many days. And all of his sons and his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, I will go down to the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt, the land of Ham, unto Potiphar, a black man, an officer of Pharaoh, and the captain of the guard. All right? And then now we're going to go over to the 38th chapter of Genesis, where it gets really weird. And it came to pass. Remember, Jesus Christ came through not Reuben, because Reuben slept with his father, not Simeon, not slept, there was father slept with his father's concubine, uh, not Simeon or Levi, because those two killed the Canaanite city of Shechem, the Shechemites. Uh, when they should have been in covenant with them as Hebrews and took their wives and raped their wives and had Canaanite children that, they're, that are now considered Hebrews. So they were darker. And the fourth child was by Leah. His name was Judah, from where we get the word Jew, a derivative of his name. And Jesus Christ came through this guy's lineage. So let's find out the ancestry of the beginnings of Jesus Christ. Uh, ancestry. And it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brother and turned into a certain Adulamite, whose name was Hira. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite, whose name was Shua. And he took her, and he went in unto her. And she conceived that she's this Canaanite. Who's the father of Canaan? Ham. So she's a black woman. So Judah goes into her, and she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Er. And she conceived again and bare another son, and she called his name Onan. And this black woman yet again conceived and bare a son and called his name Shelah. And he was at Chesbaz when she bare him. And Judah took a wife for heir, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. Now, where was Judah at? He was in the land of Cana. So what was what color or what nationality was Tamar? His family was Hebrew. They were only Canaanites. So she was a black woman too. So he takes a, a black woman to marry his son, Ur. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, this was the Levant uh, ceremony, Go to your, unto thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass that when he went in unto his brother's wife, making love to her, that he spilled his seed on the ground, lest he should give seed to his brother. And his brother, which was the eldest son, uh, when their father died, would get the double portion. So he says, nope, I'm not going to let this guy have it. I'm going to keep it for myself, and the inheritance will be mine. 
And verse 10 says, and the thing which he did displeased the Lord, therefore God slew him also. Then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, remain a widow at thy father's house until uh, Shelah, my youngest son, be grown. For he said within his heart, that's preadventure, he die also, as his brothers did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. And in the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Cana's, the daughter of Shua, Cana's wife, died. So the woman's name wasn't Shua, she was the Canaanite's daughter. Uh, this Canaanite, uh, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up to his sheep shearers to Timnath, which is a Philistine territory. This is black land also. Ham's the father of the Philistines. And he and his friend Hira, the Adulamite. And it was told Tamar saying, behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnath to shear his sheep. And she put on her widow's garments, she put her widow's garments off of her and covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place, which is by the way, to Timnath, for she saw that Shelah was grown and she was not given unto him to wife, to marry. And when Judah saw her, he thought her to be a harlot or a prostitute because she had covered her face. And he turned unto her by the way and said, uh, go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, what wilt thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? And he said, I will send a kid from the flock. And she said, wilt thou give me a pledge until thou send it? And he said, what pledge shall I give thee? And this black woman said, thy ring, your signet, and thy bracelets, and thy staff that is in thy hand. And he gave it to her, and it came in unto her, and she conceived by him this Hebrew. And she arose and went away and laid uh, by her veil from her and put on the garments of her widowhood. And Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend, the Adolamite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand, but he found her not. And he asked the men of that place, saying, where is the harlot that was openly by the side? And they said, there's been no harlot in this place. And he returned unto Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of the place said that there was no harlot or prostitute in this place. And Judah said, uh, let her take it, let it be lest it be ashamed unto us. Behold, I sent this kid, and thou hast not found her, kid being a goat. And it came to pass in about three months when she was showing that it was told Judah, saying, Tamar, thy daughter-in-law, has played the harlot also. Behold, she is with child by whoredom. And Judah said, bring her forth and let her be burnt. And when she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law saying, by the man whose things these are, am I with child? And she said, discern, I pray thee, whose are these? And she presented the signet, which is the ring, the bracelets, and his staff. And Judah, Judah acknowledged them and said, ah, she has been more righteous than I, because I gave her not to my son uh, to marry, and he knew her again no more. And it came to pass, and the in the time of her travail, that she bore twins. Twins were in her womb. And it came <laughs> to pass that when she travailed, that one put out his hand, and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread, saying, this came out first. And it came to pass, as he drew his hand back, and behold, his brother came out and said, how is it that thou hast broken forth? This breach be upon thee. Therefore, his name is called Pharaoh's. And this is the ancestor of Jesus Christ. And afterwards came out his brother and uh, that had scarlet thread upon his hand and his name was called Zira. Now, let's see, if you go to Matthew chapter one, you will find this half black child by Judah, the father of the Jews is, uh, in the lineage of Jesus Christ. God, Jesus Christ had no European ancestors. In uh, Matthew chapter one, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. 
Abraham begat Isaac, Isaac begat Jacob, whose name was Israel, and Jacob begat Judah, called Judas in Greek, and his brothers. And Judas, or Judah, begat who? Perez. And Zayar, Zerah of Tamar, they spell her name not T-A-M-A-R, as it is in Hebrew, but T-H-A-M-A-R. And Pharaoh's began, began uh, Edom, uh, Ezram, and Ezram became Aram, and, and then they go all the way down to uh, uh, verse 15. And Elod begat Eliezer, and Eliezer begat Mathon, and Mathon begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So Jesus began in, from the tribe of Judah, or called Judas in the New Testament, a half black tribe, okay? Now, when you listen to white people, do they ever tell you this? No. Do they ever tell you that no white person spoke in the Old Testament? Not even the father of the Caucasians, Noah's eldest son, his name Japheth. He discovered uh, Moses up. Not Moses, but Noah up, but he never said a word. But no European spoke in the Old Testament. Uh, They're only listed by name in the 10th chapter of Genesis and in uh, Chronicles. And they're mentioned by prophecy. They're prophesied of, but not one white character had a speaking part in the Old Testament and no white female was even named. But you let white people tell you the story and they whitewashed the world with it, with their paintings and all this stuff here, when they were nowhere in the Old Testament. They are in the New, but they were nowhere in the Old Testament. So, and that concludes our lesson today. Does anyone have any questions? No one? Let's see who we have on today. Leon, do you want to give a testimony of your... Uh, Broadcast. Sure, I will go ahead. Our broadcast here will be in 30 minutes, be 8.30 you guys' time, 9.30 my time. So um, I'll be on here Monday through Friday at 9.30. Um, Dago Davis, um, I have what, two, three accounts. So it'd be the one with the brown shirt and the glasses of, of Dago Davis. I couldn't find my other accounts to take them off. And uh, that's all I have for today. Well, again, the plan of salvation is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins and rose again, and you shall be saved. That is his promise, that he has promised us eternal life. Eternal life is not based upon us vowing to be good because there's none good but God. But eternal life is based upon Jesus Christ giving you the free gift. The Bible says, by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous which means put in right standing with God. And you and I are not that one, the one who was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross was Jesus Christ. And when you place your faith in him, that he died for your sins to give you his righteousness, his right standing with God, his holiness and his uh, redemption, you receive the free gift of eternal life. Does that change your morals? No, it doesn't. Discipleship does that. There's a difference between being saved and being a disciple. It's like there's a difference between being an American citizen and being patriotic, okay? It's, you should be patriotic, but a lot of American citizens are not. You should be a disciple of Jesus Christ, but a lot of the saved are not. They don't go to church. They don't sing. They don't know the Bible. Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my words. You'll keep my sayings. You ask people to, today to name 10 sayings of Jesus Christ, they'll start giving you the laws of Moses. They don't know it. So you've got to... Uh, understand where we're at today. We're in the Laodicean church age. Uh, Laodicea means the rights of the people. So right now you see uh, gay rights pastors are saying you have the right to these unbiblical lifestyles and they are trying to unite them in uh, marriage. And the Bible says that's not a holy matrimony. That's an unholy matrimony. But this is where we're at today because pastors are, have departed from the faith and they think they're doing good works because they're going by the rights of the people. And God says that which is approved of men is an abomination in the sight of God. Never before have you seen so many people uh, want to kill babies. 
<laughs> but this is the sickness that we're in today. And that's the American way nowadays, because we have the rights of the people. And God said that which is approved of men is an abomination in his sight. And the Bible says that the way of the righteous is an abomination to the wicked. They look at us and say, you believe in Jesus and he's against gayness, then you're an abomination unto us. And we say, well, you're an abomination unto God and repent of your unbelief and you can be saved. So this is where we are today. We have to fight the good fight of faith. Uh, God bless you and keep you, cause his grace to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. God bless you and I'll talk to you later. I won't be on the night, uh, Brother Davis, because I got to go to work and I've not slept yet. <laughs> So I might talk to you later on this weekend. God bless y'all. Bye-bye.